In this problem, we are given the following op amp with our circuit. We are told that the op amp is ideal. We are also given this information for our VG of T. And we need to find the steady state output. We are also asked how large can the amplitude of our VGT be before our amplifier saturates. And we are going to use these max and minimum voltages. But for our part A, we are finding the steady state output. This is going to be our V0. We need to make an expression or an equation for this. We are going to use this VN and this VP. The VN is for our negative and the VP is for our positive terminals. We know that our VN is equal to VP and this is going to help us when we write our problem out. So we are going to use a node voltage analysis. We know we have some current coming over this resistor here. We know that from our V0 we are going to have some negative feedback that's going back into our node this way. So we can add these together. And then for our VP, we're going to have some current flowing over this resistor and some current flowing over this resistor. Now we can write a formula or an equation that will express this. We're going to have our VN over our 160 kilo ohms, so 160 K, plus, and then we're going to have the VN minus our V0, and this is happening over our capacitor. Well, for this capacitor, we have our x of c equal to our negative j over our omega times c. So we will have a negative 1 divided by the parenthesis and then our omega. In this problem, our omega is 100,000. And to this, we are going to multiply it by 0 0.1, 10 to the negative 9, because we want our nanos to just be in farads. And after we do this, we are going to get negative 100,000. And I'm going to put this with a k. So we're going to have negative 100 times k just for simplicity. And to this we will have a plus our Vn minus our V0. And this is all over the 200 kilo ohm resistor. We're setting this equal to zero for the node voltage method. And then I'm going to divide this just to make it a little bit simpler. So first thing I'm gonna do is get rid of the zero and the K. So kind of divide everything by zero and a K. Now we're gonna be left with these values. And from here, I'm going to multiply everything by 80 that way we can get rid of everything in the denominator. Also, uh, I made a mistake with this capacitor right here. I forgot to include the J right here. So we should have a negative J times R 10. And after doing this, we are going to get this as our new equation. So from here, we can rewrite this, combining the like terms together. And then I'm going to, after I move V0 over here, divide both sides by what is being multiplied by. That way we can get V0 by itself and then later we are going to divide these after we find our V of n so that we can get the value for our V0. This will be the equation that we are going to plug into. Now we want to find our Vn. So we are going to use this part of our circuit. We know that our Vg is going to be 2 with an angle of 0 degrees. So since our Vp is, over, is equal to our Vn, we are going to write our Vn minus our Vg, so 2, divided by the 20 kilo ohm resistor, because that's what it's over, plus our Vn over the 80 kilo ohm resistor. This is set equal to zero, but to simplify this, I'm going to multiply everything by an 80k. And from this, we're gonna get that our Vn is equivalent to eight over five. And that is what we're going to be plugging into our other equation. And then we are going to also factor it into the top part. This is currently our equation, and it's in rectangular form, but we wanted to convert it to polar form because that's what it's asking for in here. To convert to polar form, we're gonna have that our Vmax is equal to the square root of our real number squared plus our imaginary number squared. For our angle, it's gonna be a tangent negative one with our imaginary number over our real number. And if we do this, we're going to get these values for our polar form. We're gonna take our numbers, divide them, and then we're gonna take our angles and subtract the denominator angle from our numerator angle. And that is going to be our answer for part A. Now we are going to solve for part B. For part B, we are going to find our V0 max. And to do so, we are going to use the V0 T and our VGT. We are going to set them equal to each other because we know what our V0 max is. It's going to be this five volt and this negative five volt. We just need to find out at what voltage this happens. So what we're basically going to do is make an equation. We are going to have our V G of T equal to the two with an angle of zero degrees. And then this is going to be over our V naught T. And this is set equal to what we found it to be, which is 2.15 at an angle of negative 21.4 degrees. 
Now we are going to divide these. So we're going to divide the real numbers and then we're going to subtract the denominator angle from our numerator angle. And we are also going to substitute in for this V naught of T, a negative five or a five volt. So it's going to be plus minus five volts. And this stems from this because that is what our V naught can be. That's the max it can be at. And from here, we want to get our VGT by itself. So we're going to multiply both of our sides by a plus minus five. And if we do this, we are going to get a plus minus 4.64 with an angle of 21.4 degrees. And so our V max for this equation is going to be this plus or minus 4.64. Well, it's asking us for how large it can be. So it's going to be a plus 4.64, and that will be the answer to our part B. If you want more network analysis problems, there's a playlist in the description. If you want notes that cover the entire coursework for this section, they will also be in the description below the like button.